All right. Well, I see that it is the top of the hour. And since we have a very exciting and busy agenda for our time together, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm sure that people are going to be joining as we move along. Um, and also this will be recorded. We are live streaming right now on YouTube and it will be recorded. So you'll be able to access or share this session afterwards. Um, so, all right, well, welcome. As I mentioned, just looking in the chat, it's so exciting to see that there are people from all over the world joining. As I mentioned, Malawi, Philippines, India, Panama, Italy, Mexico, um, the UK. Uh, I'm calling in from New York. So this is really a true global gathering. And, and that's what we really want for today and for our audience is to share with one another how we can increase this global community and, and, and bring this global community to our students. So I just want to thank you all for joining us for this special event, Developing Global Citizens Through Dialogue, Training for Educators Everywhere. My name is Lisa Petro, and I am the Education and Quality Lead for Generation Global. And we're really here today as part of our shared commitment to Sustainable Development Goal 4.7 and 4.C. This aims to ensure that learners everywhere acquire the knowledge and the skills for global citizenship and that educators everywhere have access to quality professional development to support learners needs and development. So before we begin, I would just like to take a moment to reflect and invite you all to reflect on what motivates you to do the great work that you do and why this topic, developing global citizens in our youth, why this is so important to you. So if we could just go to the next slide. Thank you. Next slide, thank you. So what we're gonna do in a moment here is launch a poll. And I'd like you to just reflect on why do you work in education? Why do you do this great work that you're so invested in? And there are gonna be four responses here. And I know this might not be completely true for everyone, but these are four general ideas or responses. And I ask you to choose the one that you most relate to on why you're doing this great work with young people that you do. So perhaps you want young people to be able to take care of themselves and others, or perhaps you feel like you're making a difference by helping young people in the world find their voice. Maybe you feel very close to supporting future generations and having the skills they need to manage the complex challenges that the world face. Or perhaps you believe the best investment for the future is to equip young people for the, for the global workforce. So if we could launch this poll, please, you'll see it pop up on your screen. Oh, we lost the poll. Ah, oh, there it is, great. <laughs> and I invite you all to please select the one that you most closely relate to. And we'll just take maybe, you know, 30 seconds or so, 45 seconds, just to give everybody a chance to respond to this poll and why you do the work that you do with young people. Why is this so important for you? Just a few more minutes seconds, I should say, sorry, not minutes. <laughs> we don't have minutes to spare. We have seconds to spare. <laughs> and, if you, and if you don't wanna take the poll, that's fine. You can type in the chat. It'd be lovely to, to, to hear what you have in the chat as well. All right, so let's see what those results are. Excellent. And we have kind of a mixed, a mixed response. 
Um, so it looks like uh, many people here, the most amount of people are really looking at providing future generations with what they need to manage complex challenges. And that would really include global issues, right? But we also have people that are looking to support youth and finding their voice and having those kinds of skills and attitudes to care for themselves and others and also be ready for the workforce. So we can stop those results, thank you. And maybe just go back to the slides, thank you so much. The truth is, no matter what you chose from those options, if you selected any of them, you are already committed to developing global citizens. All of these responses are related to being a global citizen. As educators, we get to look beyond our subject matter and help young people make connections to the real issues that they face, to the reality of their everyday life. We can support them in building skills for communicating with the world so they can navigate diversity, so they can build connections across different contexts and backgrounds, both for themselves personally and professionally. Their success is central to their ability to communicate who they are, what they experience, what they learn, and how they engage with society. So our world really needs educators who make real life connections beyond our subject matter and who really appeal to a sense of common humanity, who foster personal and shared responsibility, who nurture students' growth, and who know how to do this by integrating and using intercultural communication methods like dialogue to develop global citizenship. So we have a, excuse me, very exciting agenda for you today. If we can just go to the next slide, please. Thank you. We have three amazing speakers here to share with you this importance for dialogue, for intercultural communication and developing teachers' education in these areas. We're gonna hear from powerful leaders from a variety of backgrounds and settings, and they're leaders because of their dedication, their creativity, and their dynamism in fostering intercultural communication and global citizenship in learning communities around the world. To get us started, we're gonna first listen to a special message from our executive chairman at Generation Global, Sir Tony Blair, that he has shared for you all. If we could please just share this message, thank you. Welcome everyone, joining today's Dialogue course launch event. I'm delighted so many educators from all over the world are part of the Generation Global community. Your participation is integral to making the world more peaceful, inclusive, and sustainable through global citizenship and dialogue. With the world's largest youth population ever, it's imperative that we equip young people with the knowledge and skills necessary to live, work, and interact with peers from diverse cultural backgrounds, beliefs, and perspectives, and in doing so, build societies that foster diversity and promote coexistence. Dialogue enables young people to gain self-confidence, explore and understand their own and others' beliefs and values, and discover how they can make a positive impact in their own communities and across the world. With our mission to bring important skills such as critical thinking, active listening, global communication to young people all over the world, we hope we're contributing to Sustainable Development Goal 4 of the United Nations with the aim of ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education for all. Our first online professional development course will train educators to bring these core communication skills to their learning communities. Participants in this free and self-paced course will learn how to teach the five core skills and have access to Generation Global resources to support their learners. Whether you're already using dialogue with your learners or you're just starting to integrate global citizenship into your community, 
I want to commend you for recognizing dialogue as a life skill and not just a lesson. So I wish you a, I wish you a rich learning experience and appreciate your commitment to preparing young people to be global citizens today and the innovators and leaders of tomorrow. Thank you for being a vital part of the Generation Global community. Thank you so much. And with that very uplifting send off, let's hear from more very inspired speakers. So I am very proud and pleased to introduce our first speaker, Jennifer Klein. She is a product of experiential project-based education herself, and she lives and breathes the student-centered pedagogies used to educate her. A former head of school with extensive international experience and over 30 years in education, including 19 in the classroom, Jennifer facilitates dynamic interactive workshops for teachers, leaders, and students working to amplify student voice to provide the tools for high quality project-based learning in all cultural and socioeconomic contexts and to shift school culture to support such practices. Jennifer's first book, The Global Education Guidebook was published in 2017 and her second, The Landscape Model of Learning, Designing Student-Centered Experiences for Cognitive and Cultural Inclusion which was written in co-author, which was written with co-author Capono Ciotti, was published in July 2022. As an educational leader, writer, speaker, and bilingual workshop facilitator, Jennifer strives to inspire educators to shift their practices in schools worldwide. Welcome, Jennifer. I turn the floor over to you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Lisa. I really appreciate having the opportunity to uh, address this audience and to address the incredible importance, not just of global citizenship, but of direct dialogue with people from other cultures and parts of the world as an essential part of that work. If we can go to my first slide, please. Thank you. I always love to start from this quotation from Senator Fulbright. He's the, the senator who began the Fulbright Foundation um, and all of those wonderful awards that allow young um, graduates uh, as well as uh, teachers from all over the world to travel and explore um, and get to know other cultures. And what he said was that educational ed um, exchange can turn nations into people, contributing as no other form of communication can to the humanizing of international relations. This is a very powerful statement, and I want to emphasize in particular this idea of turning nations into people. When we connect with others, when we communicate with others, we no longer see them as countries, but as humans. Um, and that process of humanizing is really what dialogue, uh, intercultural dialogue can get us to, right? Until we really talk to somebody who is experiencing what we're studying in class, what we're um, seeing on the news, we don't have any way to truly understand it in a human way. Um, and so Senator Fulbright's work was all about making that happen. If we can go to the next slide, please. So in a lot of ways, you know, I, when I began my work in this um, and when I wrote the Global Education Guidebook, my focus was a bit more on the global, but I've actually woven a bit more in this idea of the local being important as well over the years. Um, when we're talking about intercultural dialogue, we're not just talking about connecting with some exotic other part of the world. Um, and in fact, exoticism is a really dangerous trap to fall into. We can learn as much from students who live differently than we do uh, a few miles away. Um, we can learn as much from pe people in another part of our country who come from a different cultural background um, as we can from those who are on the other side of the planet. And so I love to think of the, the goal of dialogue and intercultural work as, as concentric circles, although I, I was told by a math teacher once these are not concentric, <laughs> um, but circles of, of community, right? We begin with the family, the school, the town, right? What's local, what's close, what's real, and that's where we should do our action. But we have these opportunities to expand outward as well. And when I imagine a global citizen graduating from your schools, what I love to imagine is someone who can, um, who can connect with the world across all of those circles, someone who's able to code switch the same way you would when you're changing languages and adjust how they interact with people um, and how they communicate with people, of course, on the basis of, of those differences, right? And could move in and out of the circles fluidly. Let's go to the next slide, please. 
So I've been playing with this idea of how we engage with the world in three ways. Um, and I wanna share this with you all. I think dialogue lies at the heart of all three of them. Um, these three elements come from a poem and Lisa will share, has just shared, actually, I'm sorry, Shruti has just shared in the, in the chat, uh, the link to a, a guiding document that this comes from, um, where you'll find a poem by a Nigerian author who talks about coming to the fire with, um, to look for heads, hearts, and hands to work with him. So he Here's where we're going to start, um, is engaging with our heads. Young people need to understand the challenges of the world. Um, they need to understand that there are people in the world who don't live the same way they do, who might have different priorities, um, different needs, but also different talents and strengths. When we engage with the world through our heads, dialogue is all about just getting to know and understand another place, but through the eyes of someone who actually lives there, or through the eyes of someone who's actually experiencing the the global challenge that we're um, trying to understand. Next slide, please. Engaging with our hearts is perhaps it's the hardest, but the most important as well, because if all we do is engage with others in intellectual dialogue, in learning about their countries, and we never make that connection, that deeper connection with our hearts, um, that value orientation isn't going to happen, right? And so being able to really ensure that young people feel the stories of others and understand them, you can do that through short stories, you can do that I did that in my classroom as an English teacher all the time through literature. There are a lot of different ways to create that tug at the heart, but the bottom line is we have to connect to be able to really do that. And so again, if we really want students to walk away valuing the voices and ideas of others, we have to make those direct connections, find ways to build opportunities for dialogue and inquiry among young people, between young people and, and experts, and most importantly, with people who are experiencing the challenges that we're learning about. Next slide, please. And the last orientation is the action orientation, and this is where we're engaging with our hands, right, where we're um, doing some kind of an action, something to improve conditions. Um, one of the mistakes I think that we've made in global education, and this is what I wrote a lot about in the guidebook, is this mistake of seeing the, um, seeing the world as uh, needing saving. <laughs> and so I always wanna stop on this point and say, when we engage with our hands, when we begin to look for ways to take action on the problems that we're facing around the world, I really wanna encourage a strong focus on equity um, and on this idea that every community has young people and leaders with talents and ideas for how to improve their own communities. I think we've made the mistake all over the world of assuming that one group of people knows more than or can fix other people. And I think that's one of the gravest mistakes we make in education. When the dialogue is, how can I fix things for you? We don't humanize. We don't connect with our hearts. We're not really listening. We're assuming our own superiority. So I believe that engaging with our hands really re requires that deeper sense of we're going to work on this together right? You bring something to this. I bring something to this. Let's work together. And some of the best dialogues and partnerships I've ever seen, and these are the ones that I highlight in the book, were really opportunities where students learned from global connections, from dialogue with other cultures, with other people, but then they took that learning and applied it right in their own community. Right, so they weren't trying to fix anybody else. They were trying to learn from and with and to bring that back to their own homes. Last slide, next slide, sorry. I think I've got two more, <laughs> trying to keep an eye on it. All right. Um, the other piece that I think is important to remember is that action is not always going and doing a service project. Action doesn't have to be, I fix this for you, or even I fix this in this community. Action can actually be something very deep and resonant. And I think this also touches on the heart orientation or the values orientation, and that is the arts. This quotation here that you're seeing at the top of the screen comes from Jose Figueres Ferrer, who is the former president, one of the former presidents of Costa Rica. And in the 1970s, he was presenting um, new instruments to the symphony in San Jose, Costa Rica. And he made this statement, what are tractors for without violence? 
para qué tractores sin violines? And his point, it's become a very famous quotation across Central America, because what he was saying was, we can do all the development that we want to. We can build better infrastructure, better roads, better homes. All of that is incredibly important. But if we don't have the violins as well, then we're missing something essential. And so as a child of the arts myself, um, as a writer, as the, you know, the daughter of a cellist and the granddaughter of a pianist, I have to say, I really believe that the arts are the other way that we can create dialogue. And even having young people work together on an artistic product um, of some kind is can be some of the most powerful work we do to create connection. The, the image that you're seeing here is actually a piece of art by JR, um, who is a TED a prize winner. Um, this is on two sides of the Mexico-America border, um, or Mexico-US border, I should say, where they had a picnic on both sides, they had musicians on both sides, they were sharing food through the slats in the wall, um, and they were coming together around this piece of installation art of the two eyes um, around art, right? So I really want to encourage everyone to think about how this kind of dialogue can create, um, we're living in times of deep division, how can these kinds of connections, when they're more artistic, help us to bridge those divides? Last slide. And so I want to end on the words of one of my favorite poets who I taught my whole career, Adrian Rich, U.S. poet. Um, and this is a tiny snippet, the drive to connect the dream of a common language. It comes from a longer poem called Origins and History of Consciousness. I really do believe that the heart of language learning has to do with that drive to connect. I believe that our work in global development has to do with that drive to connect. I believe actually that it's part of the human condition to want to connect with others, to find common ground, to find that common language. So we're not speaking literally of everyone in the world should speak the same language. We're talking about learning to bridge the gaps between languages and cultures and to really come to understand each other. Uh, for me, that is the essence of dialogue. And particularly as a, as a writer, as a poet, I hope that all of you will embrace this, these challenges and opportunities um, as an opportunity to build a common language among us, um, not in a literal sense, but in a figurative sense, our ability to connect with each other. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Jennifer. That was wonderful. Before we move on to the next speaker too, just, just wanting to say, I mean, agreed that young people want to dialogue. They want to be in connection with one another. And so it's imperative we include that as a natural way, because we learn through language, as you said, you know, we create that language and it's really important that we include this in our everyday practices for education. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Jennifer, please put them in the Q and A function. I know that we're also posting in the chat and then Jennifer can address those briefly, or we'll also have time to be able to send any questions to our speakers afterward um, or at the end. So thank you. All right. So now let's go into the classroom specifically and let's hear some practical experiences from our next speaker. So Cynthia Fernandez is the director of the bicultural program at Campus Estado de México Prepa Tech in Mexico. She is a biotechnical engineer with experience in entrepreneurship, project planning and logistics in biotechnology. Currently, she is, as I said, the Bicultural Academic Program Director, and she is also a coach of a first FRC robotics team. She also is professional development facilitator for teachers in multiculturality, inclusion, active learning, and technology in the classroom. And since 2017, she has been an ambassador and a coach for BioInteractive, which is part of the educational department of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Cynthia, it is a pleasure to have you here. I turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa and everyone here. Uh, good morning from Mexico State. Welcome. Um, so I will share some personal experiences. I've been all about inclusion for the past four or five years, like really trying to get into what inclusion means. And I've been able to do that through dialogue. So those are the experiences that I will be sharing with you. And 
first of all, I, I am sharing my personal quote that I've been living at for the past two or three years. I truly believe that inclusion is thinking of those out of the norm to actually think of all. When we think about the minorities and we design our classes for the minorities, we reach everyone in our classrooms because they are the ones out of the norm. And that's why it's in quotation marks. So please, the next, the next slide. Thank you. So the very first thing inside the classroom and the most important one is we share our personal experiences. Our students learn from our experience. They learn from what we do and how we act, not what we say. What we say can be search through Google um, and even better in a YouTube video sometimes. So what they learn is who we are, how we share our personal values, as Jennifer said, um, with them and to create that ethos in the classroom that actually allows them to feel safe for learning. And feeling safe for, for learning, I think it's the first step um, for the development of dialogue. So the first thing for me to become um, a global citizenship uh, citizen is to develop these five core skills that uh, you will see in the course. I encourage you to, to take it. They talk about every single skill um, and really make us think about what it implies. So what you see here in this picture is, is me sharing some classroom, um, classroom pedagogy with some folks from the United States um, in HHMI headquarters in DC. Um, and it's a very informal talk between teachers. It's not a poster presentation. We build up our posters with a bond paper and some markers. And the, the important part of that is the active listening, the questioning, and being able to communicate between us, to share from teacher to teacher, what is it that works in our classrooms with the type of students that we have, that we all know, they vary between classroom and classroom, generation and generation, and even school and school, right? So I think one of the most important things for us as teachers is for us to develop these skills first. And then we will be able to share this experience with our students so that they develop the skills we want them to develop. Um, I teach, as, as Lisa said, I'm, I'm a biotechnological engineer. So I teach science and I'm all about STEM. Um, but Jennifer made me think about the importance of the STEAM. So the difference between STEM and STEAM is that in STEAM, you include the art. And I really believe that that part of the passionate language is very important for us to sink in difficult information. So if you help me with the next slide, please. I will share two different classes. Uh, the first one, I, I teach it during the first semester of high school, uh, freshmen. Both are for freshman students, first year. But one is first semester and the other one is second semester. So in the first semester, when we're talking about genetics, I go into um, a deep reflection on which, where the global conditions in which Darwin and Wallace were living, what were their personal characteristics? One was wealthy, Darwin was wealthy, and Wallace had to work to eat, right? So they were very different scales of, um, of cultural environments, but somehow they reached to the same theory almost at the same time in different places, but they communicated, they shared their ideas. And Darwin was humble enough 
to recognize that even though he had this beautiful paper written, Wallace had shared his ideas first with him. So that was dialogue, that was communication, and that was empathy and many other values that we can discuss inside the classroom. And what you see uh, at the right is a screenshot of a video that's called The Biology of Skin Color from HHMI by Interactive. And in there, we discuss what makes us have different skin color, right? So it's melanin. It's not a, a cultural environment. It's not um, abilities. It's not um, a different level of cognition. It's just amount of melanin, right? So that makes us, that sets the environment for us to have difficult dialogue. So if you help me with the next slide, I really think that any subject is good scenario for a difficult and reflexive dialogue. The thing is, how is it that you guide your students through the five core skills to actually get into dialogue, reflect, and then learn? Uh, these slides are in Spanish because I tried to, to, to take exactly the same material that I use in my classroom. So the reflection question here says, who has a better chance to participate in a Hollywood movie? So I just have an image of two skeletons. In here, we don't see any differences. Um, and we're just reading uh, curriculums. So the one at the left, was a uh, nominee for the Oscars and had plenty of, she has a huge background on preparation. And the other one on the right uh, is an actress from TV, etc. So after they reflect on this uh, question, they talk between them, they argue, they write down, why do they think just from this image and this information given, who has a better chance to succeed in Hollywood? And then we go to the next slide. We see their faces. We see their skin color. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you go back? Yes. Um, I mean, in the classroom, <laughs> we um, see the differences, the physical differences. And we see that the white actress is succeeding in Hollywood, she's now uh, very uh, well recognized in Netflix and so on and so forth. And the other one is has been in the spotlight just because of her skin color. So we discuss things about genetics. Um, we have active listening and communication inside the classroom. Um, and the most important thing for me is that at the end, they have this metacognition exercise of really reflecting what is it that this learning process means for them and for their future. So I want to share two different reflections that my students have shared with me um, after putting in practice this learning environment. So this learning environment through the five core skills of dialogue. So the first one says, I would love to contribute in my nearby social environment, reducing inequalities, because it's a problem we, can re we can't get rid of. And even though we have reduced it, it's still there. I also think that change starts with ourselves. So I will try to treat people the same way and promote gender equality. That way, I'll be changing the life of others, creating an impact in their lives, and hopefully they will do the same for other people. This is a personal reflection after a biology class. So I truly believe that every single teacher, no matter what you teach, can trigger this type of deep reflections in your students. As um, Jennifer said, this is engaging with our hands and taking action. This is how our students take action, just from one or two sessions in the classroom, 50 minute sessions. We do not need like the whole semester for the student to reach this type of deep reflections. And the other one is, I think that the group discussion, dialogue, active listening, I have my, with my team about SDG 15 helped me to think critically they are 
identifying which skill they have. I think that I was able to think about the importance that the production of our product will have. I think that we also were able to discover about the amount of different damages that are caused to the planet by the industries. And we also had to use our knowledge and join ideas to come up with a solution that could benefit from pomades. They were working with residues from the wine industry. So again, any subject is a good subject to have difficult dialogue. Um, the important thing for us as teachers is to develop these skills first, to be able to share that personal experience with our students so they can mimic us. So I think that's what you can learn in depth through this course. So I really invite you to take that first step into the dialogue experience. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Such powerful examples. And I just love, and I, cause I think this is a common misconception that that dialogue is an instructional strategy that can only be used in the social sciences or the humanities. But in truth, dialogue belongs everywhere in any subject, because that's our role as educators, as you pointed out, is helping young people, giving them context, real life context for the different things that we're teaching and helping them to unpack that with each other through mutual understanding. So thank you so much for those powerful examples. Wonderful. And likewise, yeah, absolutely. And if you have any questions, audience, for Cynthia, please post them in the Q&A chat and, and she can answer them there. Um, thank you so much. All right. So we will move on to our last speaker of the day before we go ahead and just show you a little bit of the course so you know what the Introduction to Dialogue course entails. But before we do that, we're going to listen to Betty Abeng, who is the CEO of Commonwealth Education Support Trust. She is originally from Cameroon and she is a passionate and dynamic leader with over 15 years of experience working within the nonprofit sector, supporting growth, cultivating effective partnerships, delivering results and leading growth. Prior to being appointed CEO, she also served as a trustee on the board of Commonwealth Education Trust. She is a passionate education and youth skills advocate, and she holds a BSc in economics and business from the University of London Burbeck College. It is wonderful to have you with us today, Betty. I turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Lisa. I am so delighted to be here and so excited that this day is finally here. And most of all, the Commonwealth Education Trust is delighted to have a working relationship in place with Generation Global. I personally think and we think that this will be beneficial to educators and ultimately improve learning outcomes for children all over the world. So just to go give an overview, and I really hope I don't go over my time. Um, so next slide, please. So I'm going to touch on the role globalization plays and, and in, in the need in addressing the need for effective cross-cultural com communication. Um, talk a bit about new technologies and how that enables us to connect with people across the globe instantly. Um, I'm going to talk about the role of understanding the other culture in terms of really embracing uh, um, dialogue. Um, the role of understanding our own cultures, um, and then the important role that the CET partnerships currently play in enabling intercultural communication and also dialogue through technology. And then finally, I'll, I'll talk about the partnership we have in place with General, Generation Global, the partnership Generation Global has in place with the Commonwealth Education Trust and the value that it's going to bring to our program, Teach 2030s, and the teachers who access our courses. Next slide, please. So globalization, you can, I mean, okay, so yeah, obviously you can go to the next one, sorry. Um, gosh, okay, so I think what, what has happened is the headings for the previous um, ones have been taken off completely. Am I right, Lisa? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we had a few slides that we just annexed because we thought we were using them as notes, but that's all, all right. right. Okay, yeah. that's fine. That's okay. I'll just use the haze and I'll talk about this. So I really want us all to sort of not focus on what we have on, have on the slide now, but think about globalization and the way the world we now live in is changing ever so quickly. And these changes do provide a lot of opportunities and challenge, but also 
we need to respond constructively as individuals, as students and as teachers. So this means that education needs to transform and focus on developing the skills which will enable a more multicultural understanding. Um, so given the cur current political and social tension conflict with people all over the world, which really some of them are caused by varying ethnic and cultural groups, well-planned intercultural dialogue ultimately offers a concrete strategy to ensure that the next generation is prepared to navigate the world we live in. I would like to draw from personal examples, um, especially within the context of, 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 of having a course on dialogue that will be introduced in the classrooms for teachers and ultimately learners. I come from Cameroon where, you know, dialogue wasn't really something that was encouraged. Um, personally, you're simply being told to do, um, you know, either a task, a chore, or to go somewhere, for example, and you weren't encouraged to ask a lot of questions. And I would like to think that such, you know, such an upbringing ultimately also meant that I became very shy in, you know, asking questions. Um, and, and, and obviously I thought I had no real role to play in the decision-making of, you know, my own life and some of the, and some of the other um, um, decisions that I had to make regarding my career, for example, or what job I wanted to do in the future or where I wanted to, 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 to live. Um, and I think this, this uh, dialogue course is ultimately so beneficial. And I know that it will have another, you know, a kind of domino effect. It's not just going to end in the classroom, but it will go beyond the classroom. And ultimately the learners will also influence their parents. I wanna talk about how new technology en enables us to connect with people across the globe instantly. Um, I think a lot of educational institutions, not only in, in, in Western countries, but also in the African continent are using technology to connect with each other. Um, we at the Commonwealth Education Trust are priding ourselves with the fact that we are using tech to harness the multiplicated power of ensuring that teachers get the training that they need. And we think that this is ultimately, you know, going to really, really grow the, 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 the skills of those that we're trying to reach globally. I think when in terms of, in terms of you know, multicultural dialogue and, 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 and the place of, of intercultural um, dialogue within the classroom, I think it's important to reflect on one's understanding of other people's cultures as well. Um, we're becoming increasingly culturally diverse there's an increased connection, people from different backgrounds. Um, and sometimes our relationships are more dependent on our ability to com communicate competently with people from other cultures whose values, behaviors may, may vary from our own cultures and practices. And I think when people find themselves really communicating beyond their comfort zones in a context that requires constant attention to the negotiation of meaning, it really helps you understand world views and have a more rounded understanding of the world which is outside of you. The next point that I really wanted to touch on was the importance of understanding one's own culture. I think there is a relationship between the level of knowledge of one's culture and the knowledge that can be acquired over a third culture. I think in order to build communities that are often very divided, it's important to embrace one's own culture and that ultimately leads to a, a pride that will also enable that transmission of information for another person who might want to know more about my own culture, for example. If we don't learn about the influence that cultural groups have had on our own activity, our history, I think we're missing out on an accurate view of our society and communities. So we're now on the slide that's actually being displayed on your screens. And I wanna talk about the role that the CET partnerships have played in enabling intercultural communication through technology. We have a partnership in place with a, a private school called Radley College, which I had the privilege of visiting yesterday. And this has been, so that, sorry, the, the next slide, please. Great. So we, we pride ourselves as an organization on being able to collaborate with any organization in order to bring our Teach 2030 program and improve digital skills into our community. 
Through our pillar of Elevate Voices, we provide a platform to teachers and learners to ensure that their voices are heard, recognized, and that they can become agents of change in the systems in their location. And to, in order to do this, partnerships are very important. One of our partnerships, which is the one with Radley College, has enabled us to connect students from Radley with students in schools in Kenya, Zambia, and even in Cameroon, where I come from. And the aim of this particular partnership is to dispel the myth of them and us, and to recognize the shared humanity and the shared connections with pupils and teachers who are working mostly in lower income settings. Next slide, please. So this is a photograph of some of the boys that were presenting yesterday during my visit. And what really struck me was that they have, through their communication with the students in, Brad, in, 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 in Kenya and, and in Cameroon and in Zambia, they obviously are thinking about what life would be for them as, you know, once they've, they've, been, they've come out of Radley College, how will they become global citizens? through this exchange that they've been having with the students, they're coming up with solutions themselves to solving poverty, to solving some of those sustainable development goals. And for me, that was very, very impressive. And these are effective ways of creating intercultural dialogue. And it shows just how important technology is as an enabler in doing so. Next slide, please. Thank you. So this, these are students from Kilembwa, there's a, that's a secondary school in, in, in Kenya, and they're discussing UN SDG goals with their colleagues from Radley College. And the students chose three goals. They chose no poverty, no hunger, and quality education. And they exchanged their ideas on what best the government should do to focus on um, to meet the SDGs by 2030. And they also came up with some of their own ideas on what they can do to make sure those goals are attained. Next slide, please. So by using technology, and this is also based on one of our four core pillars, which is to elevate teachers' voices. We're collaborating with the teachers who are, who we've, we've through our partners, and we're hosting live Q and A's with them. And this ultimately means that we're, we're just, we just, we just, and what I enjoy most about this is that we sort of like being the bridge between what would be a situation where, you know, teachers won't be able to access the courses, we're using technology to ensure that these teachers' voices are heard, they feel valued, which isn't often the case, and then that their peers can also be encouraged through their presence. Next slide, please. And so I would like to really move on to, you know, to say how delighted we are once more about the partnership that we have with Generation Global. I think it will bring a huge amount of value for us to host the Introduction to Dialogue course on our platform. We already have a Becoming a Digital Learner course, and we think the Dialogue course, especially for the settings that we are working in, will ultimately really improve um, or complement what we already have, because that would mean these, these is, you know, it gives a whole holistic um, approach to it. So they will ultimately participate in, in having conversations that influence their own lives. Um, and so, yeah, this, this, we, we're really excited about this. And so just to give you an overview, the CET will be signposting gen, uh, educator courses on our Teach 2030 platform and Generational Global will also signpost some of our own courses. And hopefully we can then co-create some content which will be useful for our educator and learner audiences. Next slide, please. So this is what it would look like on the website. So you would, um, you would see the online teacher courses, the digital learner course, and then the whole school program, and then the partner resources. And with, from the partner resources page, you will then, you can go on to the next slide, please. You will then be able to see the partner course and the becoming a digital learner course from Generation Global, um, which will be hosted on there. Uh, there's a little image just on the, on my um, right-hand side. If you just click on there, whoever's um yeah so so yeah our course is bite-sized low data accessible from any any device and you can you can log on there right now i can see some of our ambassadors who are logged in as well thank you so much for joining us and um and yeah we're really looking forward to this and for those ambassadors who i can see online please do do connect and and have a look take a look at the becoming a digital learner course 
And then my last slide. Thank you. I would like to finish with this quote from Yuval Noah Harari. And it says, in a world deluged by irrelevant information, clarity is power. And I think there's nothing, there's one of those, it's not the most important, but you know, we're, we, with all these distractions we have now and that we're all really exposed to, having a, a, an understanding of the importance of dialogue is an amazing place to start. And, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased and I feel honored that I've had to, I could be among such a fantastic host of speakers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Betty. How powerful to sort of end this talk. I mean, Commonwealth Education Trust is doing so much good work in bringing quality education opportunities to teachers all over the world. And so then to just talk about how, you know, dialogue is really a skill to help us find clarity, to help us really find what's important, what is the most important. And so such a powerful message to remember that it's not just an instructional strategy, it's really a tool for teachers to create life skills. So wonderful, thank you, Betty. Thank you. All right, so I am so thankful for each of the speakers today to really help us paint this picture of the importance of dialogue and intercultural communication and the different ways in which we can bring this into our classrooms and ways that we can create professional development opportunities across all different kinds of educational settings. Um, if there's questions again for the speakers, please put them in the Q&A chat. They'll be here to answer them in the chat. Um, and if there's any lingering, we can always send them off as well. But before we conclude our time together today, I did wanna take an opportunity to just share a little bit about this Introduction to Dialogue course that we're celebrating today. The, the reason that we've all come together to really support bringing dialogue into the classroom. So at Generation Global, we have developed our first online course and it's called Introduction to Dialogue. It's to support educators of all levels, whether you've been using dialogue in the classroom um, or other communication methods, or you're brand new to this experience. We really want it to have an opportunity for you to learn those core skills that Cynthia was talking about, for example, and to practically bring that into your learning community. So this is a free course for anyone who registers on our platform. You can find our platform, I'm sure we'll put it in the chat. You can find our platform at adventure.generation.global. And all you have to do is register onto that teacher portal. When I'll show you where you can locate it when you, when you, when you go into the portal. It's, it's pretty simple, it's self-paced. It should take about four to six hours for you to complete. And you'll have 30 days to complete that course. So, so plenty of time to work at your own pace. And after you've completed it, you will receive a course certificate. So what does this course entail? What will you receive from this course? So first of all, we really wanna support educators and having a foundational knowledge about what dialogue pedagogy is. So helping you to understand what, what, what is the definition of dialogue and how is this different from other ways that we might use communication. Second, you'll get lots of strategies and activities for teaching the five core skills of dialogue. So we know it's not enough to have this theory, but you need practical things that you can go away immediately and do with your learners. And that's what this course will give you. It will give you immediate activities to teach each of those five core skills, um, global communication, questioning, active listening, critical thinking, and reflection. And then lastly, now that you have this information and you have these strategies and these activities, we would wanna support you in developing a plan of action, something that you can walk with, a tangible plan of action for implementing what you learned from the course. So again, this is something you can do immediately, even as you're going through the course, as you go through the pieces, you'll be able to implement the different modules and parts. So what I'm going to do is just very quickly, I'm going to show you some highlights of the course so you get an idea of what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and I'll share my screen. Okay, 
So as I mentioned, when you sign on to adventure.generation.global and you log in with your account, you'll immediately be taken to the teacher dashboard. And under the For Me tab is where you're going to find our professional development opportunities. You'll see the introduction to dialogue course there. I also wanna mention at the bottom, there's other opportunities as well. Some courses from Commonwealth Education Trust uh, that you can find links to at the bottom as well. But for our introduction to dialogue course, you're just gonna go ahead and open that up. And that'll bring you to our overview page. So all of the relevant information you need, perhaps if you're going to use this for professional development credits with your schools or your institutions, or you want to show uh, you know, what you're doing in the course to a mentor, or if you're in a pre-service teaching in university or any of these situations, this will give you that information the course overview. You can download the syllabus, you can download the resources. We also provide you with the size of those files. So if you are working on meter data, you know, connection, you need to know what, if you have limited connectivity, you'll know how much um, each of these pieces will use. So you'll be able to look at some of those learning objectives. And of course, there is always um, a variety of ways we have differentiated learning on the site. So there's videos that will also explain some of these finer points. So different ways for you to get that information. There are four modules in the course. So you have a course overview, you'll learn about what dialogue is, you'll learn how to teach the dialogue skills, and then you'll also have some tutorials about the tools and resources we offer um, as Generation Global are free opportunities for video conferences or the ultimate dialogue adventure. This will show you how to access those free resources and use them in the classroom. So once you have gone beyond the introduction and you start the course, some of the highlights that you'll find for each of those modules, we break down the content. So for example, the five core skills, we break each of those skills down for you. So we give you information and knowledge about what that means. And then we also provide for you at the end of each of those, some kind of learning activity that you can take away and do with your students. So you can download worksheets, activity lesson plans to be able to teach those particular skills. Not only do we give you the materials, the printable materials for that, but we also then walk you through interactive exercises that help you experience what it's like to do those activities that you'll be asking your students to do with you. So you understand how to teach that activity and what it's like to participate in that activity. This is just one example for questioning. Another, another wonderful highlight of the course is that we have live dialogue spaces for teachers throughout the whole course. So you'll have opportunities to come together as a dialogic community, as a community of best practice um, and talk about pivotal questions. So for example, in this dialogue space, teachers are talking about what might you do to create a safe and brave space. And we have people from all over the world, Italy, Mexico, um, India, and they're interacting with each other, talking about some of those best practices. So this is a space that you'll also be able to revisit after you graduate. You can always come back to your platform and you can go back into these spaces after you've completed the course and continue to have these conversations. The other thing I wanted to point out was this plan of action that you develop. So as you go through all these activities at the end, We'll prepare, we'll prepare you for teaching them in the classroom with our cornerstone model. And so these are four key steps you can do to implement dialogue with your learners. And we'll walk you through that. So you'll be able to fill each of these sections out to build and construct your own plan. And if you feel a little stuck, that's okay, because we also have an opportunity for you to hear real life lessons from teachers in the Generation Global community and what they've done to bring dialogue into the classroom. So you'll be able to get those, those tips as you go along. Lastly, after you complete that plan of action, you'll be able to download and print it out so you can take it away with you and you can use it and following those steps. And then once you've completed that course, you've done that four to six hours, 
You will have your own teacher portfolio on our platform. You'll have a certificate that you can download from here. You can also share your portfolio through these social media links with external. So perhaps again, a mentor, a director, um, you know, your family and friends, whoever you want to know that you've completed this course. And that will just lay out for them what those objectives are that you've met and you've learned. And again, you can get your certificate from here. And also there would be a section on your platform to re-download re your plan of action and revisit those best practice communities that you saw before. So I will stop there because I think we are at time, but I invite all of you to please visit adventure.generation.global, sign up for the platform, take the course, try it out, share it with your educator friends. And if you have any questions, please email us at helpdesk at generation.global. You can also drop things in the chat and we can follow up with you separately as well. I want to also just take this moment once again to thank our wonderful speakers and thank you all for being part of this Generation Global community, for teaching from the heart. That's really what brought us here together today. Thank you so much, be well, and we look forward to seeing you online.